Erythroblastosis fatalis is the topic, and erythroblastosis fatalis essentially involves something called an Rh factor. And an Rh factor essentially is on the surface of certain red blood cells. And what is a, a Rh factor? Essentially it's an antigen, and in particular it's the D antigen. Now when this is on the surface of a person's red blood cell, that person is known to be Rh positive. And if a person is Rh negative, that means that they do not have this. Now, the problem occurs during pregnancy, and I will try to my best to illustrate what happens. Now, you need to have some very specific uh, uh, situations for this to even happen. First of all, the mother needs to be Rh negative. Next, you have to have a Rh positive father and then you have a fetus that is also Rh positive. Now what happens is you have these red blood cells in the fetal circulation and they are Rh positive so I'll just de designate like a little R here to, de to show that they're Rh positive. Now what can happen is some fetal red blood cells can move across the placenta into the mother and uh, what that happens, you know, it can happen throughout the pregnancy. Now when that happens, it can lead to some serious problems because the mother body can then produce anti-RH antibodies against these uh, fetal red blood cells. And I'll draw those in bright green to kind of illustrate what these antibodies can look like. Now, the good news is that nothing bad happens in this first pregnancy. The bad news is that a second during the second pregnancy, this can result in severe anemia or even death of the fetus. Now, before we get to the second pregnancy, before we start talking about the second pregnancy, there's something that can be done uh, to prevent the second pregnancy from having problems and that is giving something called Rogam. Now what is Rogam? Rogam essentially is an anti-RH antibody injection and what it does is, let's use orange, you give the mother an IM shot at 28 weeks of the pregnancy and what it does is it takes out all these um, fetal red blood cells that have crossed over into the circulation. Now that's good because if you can do that you won't get the maternal immune system making these uh, antibodies. So if you give Rogam the and our anti-RH antibodies will take out these uh, fetal red blood cells from the circulation. Now if you don't give Rogam, what happens is, even before the second pregnancy, the woman will develop her own anti-RH antibodies. And I'll draw those in green, bright green. And these linger, these circulate in the system and they remain in her system until the second pregnancy. And then if you have a second pregnancy, similar scenario, you have a fetus with these Rh positive uh, red blood cells. What can happen is these anti-Rh antibodies can cross over via the placenta and attack the fetal red blood cells and they can cause hemolysis and if they cause hemolysis then the baby can become severely anemic and it can also lead to death of the fetus so that's essentially what happens and why is it called erythroblastosis fetalis well it's fetalis I think I should uh, 
emphasize that it's not fatalis, it's fetalis. The, this part of it just refers to the fetus. Erythroblastosis is referring to the fact that in response uh, to this uh, uh, anemia, the fetus's bone marrow will produce and release immature red blood cells. So that's essentially what this term means. So now let's get into a little bit about the diagnosis. Well, even before you have any problems, at the first prenatal visit, you have to measure the woman's Rh blood type and then also measure if she has any circulating anti-RH antibodies that I drew in the previous diagram. And then of course the same test should be done for the father and the, and the fetus. Now there's a very very important test I wanted to talk about called the Coombs test. And the Coombs test essentially is a test that checks to see if the blood contains certain antibodies. If, uh, if any antibodies are present in the bloodstream. If a person has antibodies in the blood, those in particular the mother, as I drew in the diagram, they can attack and destroy the fetal red blood cells. Now there's two types of Coombs test. There's a direct Coombs test and there's an inter indirect Coombs test. The direct Coombs test checks for antibodies that are uh, attached to the surface of a red blood cell. So antibodies attached to the surface of RBCs. And then the indirect uh, Coombs test checks for antibodies that are just floating around, that are unattached. So unattached unattached antibodies. Now, in this kind of particular scenario, erythroblastosis fatalis, the direct Coombs test is done to test the blood of the baby, of the newborn. The indirect blood uh, test is done uh, with the blood of the mother. So, use indirect to test the mother's blood, use direct to test the newborn. Now you might say, well, when you say antibodies, which antibody, uh, which immunoglobulin? There are several different types, IgG, IgM. In particular, we're talking about IgG, so please remember that. And of course, we all know that if the woman does have floating or <laughs> unattached antibodies, these can cross over into the uh, fetal circulation and uh, cause hemolysis, lice the fetal red blood cells. So how would you treat this? Well, interestingly, if a fetus is uh, affected, you can do fetal blood transfusions. It's a highly uh, uh, specific treatment. Uh, it involves um, a, a specialist, uh, and you can actually intra give these intrauterine blood transfusions to help the babies anemia. But more important, or just as important, I guess, is pr uh, treatment is prevention. And the prevention of this is by giving, at 28 weeks, the mother something called anti-RH antibody as an injection. And what that helps does is neutralize the RH positive fetal red blood cells. These are also, there's several names given. Is anti-RH antibody, sometimes it's called anti-D antibody, because remember RH is an antigen, and in particular it's a D antigen. And then there's a brand name, which is very popular. It's called Rogam, especially in the United States. So at 28 weeks you give this, it's an IM shot, usually 300 MCG IM shot and you also give it 72 hours after uh, delivery after pregnancy termination 
Now, notice I wrote 300 mcg. Now, is it always 300 mcg? Or how about 600 mcg? I mean, why would you give only 300? Well, the 300 mcg number, the, essentially the dose of the rogam that you're giving, is based on the fact that there was a standard amount of blood that went from the fetus to the mother. And that standard amount, they say, is about 30 milliliters. Now, what if there was a lot of uh, blood transfer from the fetus to the mother? What if it was greater than that? You would need to give more rogam. So how do you know how much blood went from the fetus to mother? Well, you know that with a special test. And it's called a Clare-Betke test. And the Clare-Betke test essentially measures the amount of fetal blood that transferred it over into the maternal circulation. And for every 30 mLs, you give 300 uh, mcg of rogam. So let's just say there was 60 mLs of blood that went from the fetus to the mother during pregnancy. Then you'd probably get 600 mcg of uh, rogam. So a very important test. So let's take a look at some clinical vignettes and see what this looks like. A 28-year-old primigravid woman at term comes to labor and delivery ward with a gush of fluid and regular contractions. Her prenatal course was remarkable for her being RH negative and antibody negative. Her husband is RH positive. Over the following 10 hours, she progresses in labor and delivers a 3600-gram 3, gram boy via normal spontaneous vaginal delivery. Placenta does not deliver spontaneously, and a manual removal is required. To determine the correct amount of rogam, anti-D immunoglobulin, that should be given, which of the following is the most appropriate test to send? So what we're trying to measure, and this is a very good question because manual removal of placenta uh, unfortunately transfers more blood uh, from the fetus to the mother than normal. So you would normally just give 300 mcg of rogam as an IM shot, but you might need to give more because of this manual placental removal. So you want to measure how much blood actually went from the fetus to mother. Was it 30 mLs? Was it 40 mLs? Was it 60? And that can be done with a Claire Horobetki test. So that's choice B. Next question. 32-year-old woman is admitted to the hospital because of severe left-sided abdominal pain, a vaginal bleeding for the past 24 hours. She says that her last menstrual period was seven weeks ago, which is unusual because her menstrual periods always occur every 29 days. She states that she may be pregnant, but also says that she started a new job and has been working long hours lately. She just assumed that her cycle was adjusting to this new lifestyle. She is married, does not have any kids, has never been pregnant. Physical exam shows tender left-sided adnexal mass and blood at the cervix. An ultrasound shows a left-sided adnexal mass. Beta HCG levels are positive, but low for gestational age. Blood type is ORH negative. A laparoscopy is performed and a topic pregnancy is resected. She recovers from the procedure and is scheduled to be discharged in 24 hours. Most appropriate next step is. Okay, so basically, you have a situation where she has uh, an R she's an RH negative woman, and the RH antigen on the red blood cells of an RH positive fetus um, can cause problems because the mother's immune system can attack the RH antigen on the red blood cells. So in a subsequent pregnancy. If her fetus is RH positive, she's probably already developed those RH uh, antibodies, anti-RH antibodies in her circulation. So she needs to be given something that can neutralize the uh, RH uh, positive red blood cells from the fetus. And that's done with a medication known as Rogam, and that would be choice C. 
And the final one, a pregnant 38-year-old mother of two presents at the office concerned about her pregnancy. She is RH negative. Husband is RH positive. Both of her children are also RH negative. She has had two spontaneous abortions and carried a third pregnancy to term, but the child died at birth, diagnosed with erythroblastosis fatalis. The ch test of choice to determine the presence of circulating anti-RH antibody in the mother is. Well, remember, which antibody are we talking about? We're talking about IgG. That's the antibody that uh, is produced uh, by the mother in response to uh, RH positive fetal red blood cells. So that can eliminate choice B and choice D. So now we have to think about are we doing a direct Coombs test or indirect? Remember, a direct Coombs test measures um, antibodies that are attached to a red blood cell, whereas a uh, indirect Coombs test measures uh, circulating antibodies. The direct Coombs test is done with the blood of the newborn baby, and the indirect Coombs test is done with the blood of the mother. So you'd want to do an uh, indirect Coombs test which measures IgG. So that would be choice C.